15 seconds there. Stand by all cameras. Stand by videotape. Stand by slow mo. Stand by roll videotape in five. Then roll tape. Four, three, two, one. I was born in Seattle, Washington, at a time when uh, the American economy was changing. My dad went to Seattle University, and he said that he didn't want to work for Boeing because all of his friends worked for Boeing, this air, you know, this uh, aeronautics company, the giant, you know, where everybody in Seattle went to work for Boeing in those days, or they were a fisherman, or they were worked in timber, lumber. And my dad ended up going down to, to San Francisco and he met my mother, uh, who was a nurse from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, that's an interesting story, how they met. But the, the basics of, of that is I was born in 1965. And the next year, I moved down to a place called Oildale in California, which was owned by Standard Oil. And my dad worked for Standard Oil as sort of a crat, or I don't know. He never really told me what to do, but he was out in the field a lot. And that's the, one of the biggest oil fields in, in America. It's giant. And if you look where I grew up, my house was right next to the oil field. In fact, I used to walk to school uh, through the oil fields, and you can see it in a, there's a movie or a video by the musical group corn where you can see right where i grew up and it was a giant oil field and it was i didn't know anything else that was just home and most of my friends were from uh right out of uh the novel the steinbeck novel grapes of wrath most of my friends parents or grandparents were from oklahoma and they came on this this after the dust bowl and it was a very interesting way to grow up I didn't know any better. This was just how I grew up. And one of my friends, you know, my best friend, his grandmother chewed tobacco, you know, and I said, your grandmother chews tobacco. And he looked at me and he says, yours don't. <laughs> and I said, no, mine don't. My grandma was from Sweden. <laughs> you know? and, and that was kind of a funny, um, uh, funny story about where I grew up. Is it, I'm happy I grew up there, though, because you... You met all sorts of people and everybody worked with their hands. Most of my friends' dads, one of them was a probation officer, one was a, a highway patrolman, one was a truck driver, one was a bartender. And that's how I grew up. And I thought it was just completely normal. And actually, I still do. <laughs> and I'm kind of happy I, I did have that upbringing. Somebody asked me about this. There's this six degrees of separation test or somebody and or something like that with Kevin Bacon. And somebody said I had the best one they'd ever seen. And they were referring to, I like, have a Wikipedia page and uh, there's a story on there. My dad's brother was in the Navy in the late in World War II. And my dad eventually joined the Navy in Korean War. But the story is my, my uncle, oh, my dad's brother, married F. Scott Fitzgerald's niece, uh, meaning her mom, uh, you know, was F. Scott Fitzgerald's sister. And my dad told me that in early 1950s, he was in Korea and he met Clifton Sprague. This was the guy that was the hero of this very famous naval battle at that time. The, battle off somewhere you can talk about it people say it's the biggest upset miracle in naval history or something like that and so Clifton Sprague was really a, an important guy in 1950 and I said well what about F. Scott Fitzgerald you know wasn't that a big deal that was her that was you know her uncle and my dad said in 1950 nobody had, the great Gatsby was considered a failure so Clifton Sprague was much more famous in 1950 than F. Scott Fitzgerald. So that was a bigger deal. But in 1950 and in the next 10 or 20 years, literary critics started to revive The Great Gatsby, where it became the great American novel. So that was a good lesson in life for me when I was a young 
young guy about how fame can be fleeting and fame can be invented. And we always have this, this image of who is famous, but that can change over time. And even if the facts don't change, uh, the impression, public impression can change. And that's really true in things like English literature and academia. Um, but that was an interesting story that I got as a young, young person on, on fame and how it can be elastic.